absolutely super. <laughs> I am so impressed how much you guys know about your folks. That's really wonderful. Okay, so um, was it a hard thing to do to be an actor and be in the theater and have children? And why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't we start with Maya? What was it like? Um, it was. We were actually living in a community of people um, like-minded and, and around our own age. We actually we lived in um, a housing co-op. Uh, which actually attracted a lot of artists in the, in the city of Toronto. And at that point, um, there were several people in the theatre who had children the same age as our children. So at that point, it started to feel just glorious. We were in this little village, sort of fairly low-income world, uh, with other you know, fellow theatre people that had small children. And therefore, somehow, we, we felt that it was all very natural and very normal. Of course, it's a wonderful thing. You, you know, you're, you're, fall in love and get mad and you want to have children. But I do remember with Paul, who's the older, that uh, we were working at the St. Lawrence Center with, uh, actually Teddy was in the same company, and we were the only people at that time that had a small child. Is that maybe? Uh, you uh, No, no, I had it, no. And we used to feel panic stricken because we felt we should keep it um, sort of quiet, that we should never use the fact that we had a child to say, oh, I'm sorry, I might, you know, I have to leave rehearsal early, or, um, you know, we have to pick up, uh, we have to pick up Paul at the daycare, mm -hmm. or, or, you know, he's sick today, and, you know, we're going to be an, an hour late. We felt really, really frightened about ever using the fact that we had a child as a, you know, as, a, as an integral part of what we did for a living. I'm really happy to say now that today there's a, a lot more positive response to people, the fact that people who act have children, <laughs> you know, uh, and it grew better and better over the, um, mm -hmm. uh, over the years, and um, so by the time we had one child and three and a half years later, we, we had Inga, and of course by that point it, it was just so right to, to be a, a theatre family, a theatre family with children, and uh, somehow we'd gotten ourselves a little bit more confident and a little less nervous about the fact that we could tell trumpet to the world that we had children. But it was, oh, you know, there were sweaty moments. Both the kids at the same time fell sick with, I think it was chicken pox, and we lost our babysitter, and we were both in the same show at the same time. <laughs> one o'clock, there was a two o'clock matinee. One o'clock, um, we were still racing up and down the street looking for babysitters for our two miserably sick children. So, you know, there's a certain urgency in theater that, uh, <laughs> and I think we could all probably relate to that. And an unforgiving nature to it, right? yes. so that yeah. there's no... Yeah, there's no, I was thinking about it today as I fell ill with a cold this morning and I was amused about the fact that one thing I can tell you about acting mothers is that here's what they don't hear. Mom, I'm too sick too. <laughs> we don't hear it because like we're not too sick too, so they're not too sick too. So we're not very sympathetic from that point of view. You have a wonderful story about taking Inga to the summer theater you were doing. Oh yes, yeah, so I was actually at Toronto Workshop Productions and I was doing female parts. I was doing four of the plays of female parts by Dario Fo and Franca Rama. And uh, both Inga and Paul were very familiar with sitting in the audience often when I was working or you know doing rehearsals. And Inga in particular, she seemed to be um, very content to, to sit in the theater while I was doing some adult play that must be going right over her head. But she said to me, Mom, can I come and see um, your play? And I said, well, I just have to let you know that one of the plays is called Medea. And I stand there for a long time and I'm talking about how I'm going to murder the children. <laughs> and, and just remember, darling, it's just a play. So she sat there, and she was five years old, and she sat there while I did the play way at the back of the theater. And then, um, never said anything on the way home. And then the next um, weekend, she said, Mom, can I come back and see your play? And I said, you want to see it again? And I, th and, uh, I thought, that's a bit strange, but um, I thought maybe she'd, you know, play backstage or something. So she came trundling down the stairs to get uh, go to work with me, and she had a huge garbage bag full of all her toys. So I thought, okay, she's going to play backstage. So we got, went off to the theater in the car, drove there, and then I went backstage to get changed. And when I came out, I might add that my show wasn't being very well attended. There weren't that many, many people coming to the play. And there hadn't been many when she'd been there before. And when I came out to do my warm-up on stage, Inga had been left in the theater. 
I saw Barbie dolls, teddy bears, uh, trolls, and every single one of her little toys spread out across the auditorium. And she said to me, look, mum, I brought you an audience. <laughs> You know you're doing this. You're just having children. You're such a good actress, and you're doing it to avoid the fact and the responsibility of being an actress by having these children. <laughs> she, of course, later on had just as many. But um, yes, times have changed. It was all of those things that you're talking about. Oh my God. Um, I mean, I remember at Stratford, Jack Marigold and. Stage medicine. saying, well, get those damn kids out of here! What are those kids doing in the theater? You get them out! You know. And there's my uh, youngest daughter, Megan, at Stratford playing Juliet, and uh, the baby is brought into the theater and she can actually interrupt the rehearsal to breastfeed her baby. <laughs> and that's the difference of between when I had kids and, and my kids had. Um... No, it was really tough because there is, you're quite right, you, you just. You, you didn't, I mean, people knew you had kids, but you just couldn't use that as an excuse. And when the curtain, you know, it's time for the curtain to go up. I mean, it doesn't matter what, you, you've got to be there. You know what I mean? So that's, it's like, you know, the, um, no excuses. Yes, you have to be there. So uh, it, it was, and part of your mind is always like, you know, the kids and how they're doing and whatever. But I mean, it's a consequence. I mean, the, my, my, from the time they were about three, they were sitting watching Shakespearean plays. I mean, they were, they were in the theater watching stuff for the time they were all very, very young. So, of course, it did have an effect on them. It's probably why they're all in the business. Now, and you and Paul spent a lot of time at the Blythe Theater Festival, which is yeah, out and, in the uh, country and a heavenly place to have a family, really. Yeah, and from the time that Sarah and Rachel uh, were walking, or, or that we were there, they attended this young people's sort of workshop at Blythe. So every summer in your life, practically, you're used to putting on a play. And uh, in the early days, you sort of did what we did. You devised it yourself and worked on it. But it was usually a takeoff or, uh, on the plays that they saw at the theater. They would sort of satirize them. <laughs> How great. How great. And, and one thing I remember when Severn was born and I was acting in a play, the big difference was then I went home right after the show. I didn't go to the bar. <laughs> I was really happy to go home with this little baby. It does, it, it, of course it changes um, an actor's life and a, a, a person in the theater's life like it does anybody else's life. Uh, you, and, and interestingly, a lot of our social life and a lot of our artistic and creative discussions often happen after the rehearsal or after the, the show at the bar. You, you, you sometimes feel that you left the actual community to, reju to rejoin your own, own community. Did, you, did any of you feel guilty about the fact that you were um, busy in an unusual lifestyle and did you feel that the children were being deprived? Or did you feel in fact they were being enriched, which is what I'm hearing? Both. Both. Yeah. I mean, there's always a bit of guilt because, you know, I mean, it's not just that you're not there, but when you come home, you're still thinking about the show, and you're part of you still as that character, no matter who it is. So you know, they, the kids really have I, I'm having to um, share you with whatever part you're playing or whatever. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of that. And um, but on the other hand, I don't know. I, I think one of the great things about it is that you're actually able to share your creativity and your work with your with your kids. I mean, um, Edwina went with me to, um, with Stratford. We went to Australia together. We toured. Uh, we both played in Moliere. We played Bill Hutt's daughter. 
So I mean, you know, she said Stratford. I mean, Megan's been Stratford. So I played some of the plays that I did. Five. Didn't. You left out that she was five. Oh, she was no, she was twelve. Oh, you were twelve. Yeah. She was twelve. Um, 